Good evening and welcome to Undoing I Do with Stephanie in a Day. I'm Stephanie Hunnell, the owner of the Hunnell Law Group in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and your co-host for this evening. And I am Adela La Sherilyn Dow, the owner of the law offices of Adela La Sherilyn Dow in Staten Island, New York. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. I was trying to stop myself from saying co-host because you always say something <laughs> about it. And I was like, you know what, this time I'm going to try not to say it, but it just kept coming out. You should just be you, you know, come on. You know, really? You need I can't to be anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I used to try when I was a bit younger and it you no know, can't keep up with it. Nah. You know, we do this, with me. We do this live to make ourselves happy. That's what I truly believe. Can't live for anybody else but ourselves. And so, you know, you like to say co-host, and it's cool that sometimes just once in a while I'll say <laughs> and I'm also your co-host. <laughs> But Perfect. but you know who we're living you know who we're living through and for today I know you love you you love animals you have you have um some too, pretty too many cats. some pretty some pretty um robust cats in your house <laughs> they're they're all so handsome though <laughs> and they so kind of they know, know it. it they kind of sort of know that they're bomb you know. <laughs> They're so spoiled. They are so spoiled. I actually, I don't know if you saw my Facebook post, but I just posted about half an hour ago or so. I said, if Rich, my husband, and I get divorced, I said, do we, uh, does uh, Monroe, our cat, count as two cats? Because he's like 17 pounds now. <laughs> that would be interesting, but that's never going to happen, so we won't know. Yeah. <laughs> Not at this point. We won't know what happens with that. But yeah, that is our topic for today. What it happens is. to Fido or what happens to, what do we call a cat? Because Fido's always a dog, right? Yeah, Fido's always a dog. I don't know what we call a cat. Like, is there a generic name for a cat that everybody knows? I don't. Sylvester? Sylvester the cat. <laughs> That just reminded me of one of my favorite songs by Sylvester. I don't know if Sylvester had more than one song that aside from Mighty Real. You know that song? Uh -uh. A disco song. You oh. make me feel my I 100% know that song. Of course, yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome song. I don't own the rights to me singing that song, by the way. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what happens to your dog when you and your soon to be former spouse are getting ready to get divorced. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's always such a sensitive issue. Before I got on to the, before we went live, we were talking about a client of mine, Christine, who named her pooch, her new pooch, Lola, after me. My first name for everybody who doesn't know is Adelola. So she named her, her, her beautiful new puppy, Lola. And, 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 some people are like, really? Somebody named a dog after you? We don't know how to take that. But she's so cute. I, you know, <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> I think it's a compliment. <laughs> but yeah, if anybody wants to see Lola, she's on my firm Facebook page. She's adorable. I'm definitely going to have to check it out. I, I told you I hadn't seen it, so I, I do want to see it. Yeah, she's cute. But, you know, I guess the long and short of it is that Animals, even though we love them, we adore them. I wish I could have an animal right now, but my my responsibilities are too great. If I could, I would, and I would have a dog. But animals are considered um, are not considered to be children, even though we all love the animals that we have. And a lot of us, especially uh, uh, you know American folks, we all treat our dogs and cats like they are true team members of the family. Probably even better. Some people probably treat their animals better than their kids. <laughs> they don't talk back. <laughs> they don't demand iPads and you know all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, but, but even though animals are considered to be important, they are not considered to be the same as children, right, Stephanie? Right, right. So in New Jersey, we were actually just talking about this case, and there's really 
there's not a lot of law related to what happens when people are getting divorced or separated and they're dividing, you know, animals or, or you know, time sharing animals. They don't refer it to any kind of parenting time. There's no best interest of who gets, you know, who's the better person to have the dog. Uh, it's really based on contract principles. And it's, you know, if your name is on the adoption papers, if you, you know, purchase the dog or cat on your credit card, um, they're really looking at that as a contract and who gets, it is when looking at who gets the dog. But what I was saying is there is a case um, that said this, this person, they were fighting for like four years. They filed two appeals, there's all this litigation. They were never married. They had a dog together. Um, the, the female partner was going to keep the dog. And then um, she went away on a trip, left the dog with her ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend was like, I'm now keeping the dog. You're not getting them back. Um, it went through court. The judge said, I'm going to give the female $1,500 for the dog, like the cost and value of the dog. Two separate appeals ensued. Ultimately, they said that they're allowed to split custody, not custody, it's not custody, split um, possession of the animal during periods of time. Because that was the word they used, is possession. So you do, it was like five days on, five days off or something like that with the dog. So that, that, I mean, that's just a lot. It's just so complicated. You know, so that... I'm surprised, actually. I, I'm surprised that there was a monetary award and a split of time. Um, so the monetary award came first. Right. And then when they filed the appeal, I think they went back and they did the splitting of the time. So then was the monetary award done away with? Because that wouldn't be fair. Yes. They said, um, because on, her, on the appeal, she said that a monetary award is not sufficient because there's there's a love and affection for an animal that can't be replaced like a table. So was there a time frame or this was just like at what we say ad infinitum forever that they have they're going to split the time with this with this puppy? Um I don't remember there being I think it was until probably the animal died because there was yeah. nothing in it that said for a year for two years that I remember reading in the case so in the case of, of my, my client who named her dog after me, and then I'm going to talk about New York case. But mm -hmm. in, in that case, um, my client was the victim of domestic violence. And what became really clear to me is that my client's spouse was using my client's love of this dog mm -hmm. as yet another tool to abuse her. Mm -hmm. And so I actually told my client, that and it was it was difficult um, because the, the parties were still living together, um, and and they just really had a very tumultuous relationship. And um, finally, when when her spouse moved out, her spouse just took the the prior dog as well. Mm -hmm. And my client really just adored the dog. Um, really didn't have any other any family here in Staten Island, and, and you know she really just really just wasted away emotionally not having wow. her, her dog with her. Mm -hmm. um, but I had to, to coach her through that and also advise her to start thinking about getting another dog because I realized that the purpose that her, her soon to be ex spouse had was really a sinister pur purpose with keeping that dog. It really wasn't because he loved the dog and had such a great relationship with the dog or had purchased the dog or anything like that. It, it was another way of getting back at, at her. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I needed to urge her to cut the, to cut the proverbial ties with him. Right. And his ability to do that by realizing that it probably wasn't best for her to be fighting out, out over this dog. Cause it really wasn't about the dog. Right. Right. And he was never, he was always going to have that hanging over her if yeah, yeah. she didn't and, replace the animal. Yeah. 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 And think about it. I mean, so now the case that you're just talking about, obviously this really wasn't about, it wasn't about the dollar amount, right? Because this, these people spent oogobs of money having, a, going to appeal on this. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, you and I both do appeals and that is not cheap. So. Yep. 
And so to have to appeal and, you know, you have this monetary award and you can say, oh, I could get a pretty nice dog for $1,500. Uh, I could get a, you know, probably a thoroughbred dog and, right. You know, um, but Right, with that litigation that they had, two appeals and then the trial, like it went to a trial. Um, that has to be what, I don't even know. It, it's a single issue, so maybe it's a little bit less, maybe 40. Yeah, I mean, that and the appeals and the, mm -hmm. I mean that, she could have bought a whole fleet of dogs, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for that amount of money. <laughs> you know, and, and most people would, but look, you know, when you're talking about a pet, you're really just, especially if people don't have children, you're really just pulling at the heartstrings of somebody and you don't, you don't know what they might spend on that. The case that, um, is really the quintessential reading now in the state of New York is a case called Travis versus Murray. Um, it was issued in 2013 by judge Matthew Cooper, who if, any of my, any of our colleagues um, in New York have practiced before Judge Cooper in Manhattan. Judge Cooper writes incredibly eloquent decisions and this one is no different. Uh, he goes through um, the psychology of the um, humanization of dogs and quotes all, yeah. kinds of, all kinds of articles from you know, the New York Times and some other uh, publications. Um, but ultimately, he, and, and he does that to, to then get down to the grassroots and saying, hey, look, you know, we New Yorkers especially, we love our dogs, mm -hmm. we have clothing for our dogs. We have bark nail stations and everything to have our dogs' nails done. I mean, you know, there's all kinds. There, they have those little tips that they put on the dogs' toenails and stuff. Yes. People have people have custom collars for their dogs. They dye their dogs' hair. I mean, yep. listen, it's people go in for their for their for their pooches. But at the end of the day, he said, "Okay, so you all deserve a hearing on this." And this, the facts are strangely similar to to the facts of the New Jersey case, um, mm -hmm. where one one spouse goes away for um, for business, and the other spouse stays behind but then flees the house with the pooch, sends the pooch up up to New Hampshire or Vermont somewhere with mm -hmm. her with her mom, right? So she doesn't even have the dog. She sends the dog right. up to live with mom. It's like a hideout destination, hideout. like a safe house. <laughs> and, and, um, and then says, oh, the, you know, the dog was, the dog was bought prior to them getting married, but the dog was really bought for me and I care for the dog and so on and so forth. And so Judge Cooper says, look, I know everybody's dog is very important to them and it's worth a hearing. So we're going to, and he limits the hearing to one day, one day hearing. And he says, we're going to use something that he coined called the best for all concerned standard. Now I had, there's no, I, <laughs> this was brand new. <laughs> Okay, this was brand new. Um, and he said that that was going to be um, utilized. And it had been utilized in another, it actually had been utilized in another case. But um, the dog's name was Joey. And so he said that each side was going to have the opportunity to prove not only why she would benefit from having Joey in her life, but why Joey has a better chance of living, prospering, loving, and being loved in the care of one spouse as opposed to the other. And then he goes on to set forth what people had to prove at trial, what issues at least people needed to hit at the trial. And he said, look, once this is done, whoever Joey's going to live with is who Joey's going to live with. There's not going to be any parenting time for, for the pup. There's not going to be any split time, any visitation or anything like that. That's going to be it unless you all appeal the case. And then the trail goes cold. I don't I don't know whatever happened. And I feel like I need to reach out to somebody in Judge Cooper's chambers to find out whatever happened to Joey. What happened to Joey? Yeah, who did Joey end up with? You know, I, I feel unresolved. I feel like there's some unresolved issues that I need to. I feel like you should call and you should do a blog post about it. No, I should. That, that would be a great idea, actually. <laughs> that might be Whatever my Whatever happened to Joey. 
whatever happened to Joey, that might be my going into 21, 2021 blog post, you know, but you know, look, people are spending a lot of money. This, 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 um, inquiry isn't one that's going to cost people $1,500, like the amount that was an issue um, in the case in New Jersey. This is going to cost people tens of thousands of dollars. And so, yeah, and this was a single issue in their, in their divorce case, the single issue. What happens to Joey? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, we really do personalize our pets, especially when we don't have kids. I mean, these are our children. Um, and some people more than others. So I, you know, you get wrapped up in these things. And I think um, one of the, a tip for any pet owner before you have a pet um, and you're married, not married, you know, figure out what you want to do if something were to happen. You know, especially if you're not married. I think, especially if you're not married, yeah. he's going to buy. Maybe if you have an agreement in advance, you can have an agreement that you write up because then that's you know based on contract principles, at least in um, New Jersey. Um, so that way you know where the animal goes. If you're going to have one person that's going to uh, pay for the you know animal on the credit card, you know show that you've written a check for half the cost of the animal, so you just have a leg to stand on when you go to court and say that's we're 50 50 owners of this animal. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I would say the same thing for New York, right? I would just say that if you're and especially again, especially if you're not married, but even if you are married, you see, in this situation, these people bought this this pooch before they got married. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the that was one of the points that um that counsel brought up and saying, look, you know, if we're going to go along our line of cases of treating animals like they are property like their personal property, like, you know, like this pen right here, then it matters that the the dog was bought before the marriage because the presumption in the law that you've heard us talk about on this show is that any piece of property that was bought before the marriage is most likely going to be deemed to be premarital and therefore your spouse doesn't have interest in that property. Um, But when it comes to dogs, we realize that the softness of our hearts, um, the softness of the the jurist's hearts, uh, has has them treating animals slightly different right. than just the pen, but yet at the end of the day, you know, it, it's still not it, it's still not going to be considered to be a human being child. Right, and I have to say, you know, really is also about the luck of the draw. Depending on what courthouse you're in, what judge you happen to get within that courthouse how much time that judge is going to spend on this issue. Um, The the judge that you mentioned in New York, I mean, he spent a considerable considerable amount of time. I imagine in my mind that he's probably a pet owner and he's thinking in terms of, you know, making sure that he gets a good decision for the family as a, as a, not calling it a family, but as a family. Right. Um, So, Mm -hmm. I mean, it really depends. You have some other judges that wouldn't entertain it at all. They would say, I'm not giving you a hearing on this issue. This is what it is. You can, you know, take it up. I don't care. That's how some of the judges would be. That's absolutely correct. It's absolutely correct. And so, you know what? Um, it, we we then give the lawyer's answer, right? It depends, right? I don't yeah. know what's going to really happen on this kind of issue with one judge because usually we're not dealing with these issues. Although I, I've litigated over a dog um, either once or twice, and. Mm-hmm. It was a, a situation where the wife moved from New Jersey to the Bronx and l- brought the dog all the way upstate to the dog's breeder in order oh. to have the dog hide out again. It was an upstate safe house this time. <laughs> and and so, and there was a- I'm in New York with all these uh, hideouts. Yeah, well, you know how New Yorkers are. You know how we are. I mean, you know, got to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have protection spots. Yeah. <laughs> and so and so my client ended up finding out that the dog was with the breeder, did like a quick midnight run, oh. the dog brought the dog back to where he was living. <laughs> and yeah, it was a whole scene. It was a whole scene. My client ended up keeping the dog. That's probably because, you know, he had me as his lawyer. But <laughs> But, but yeah, you know, we, we've had those situations and to, to, to litigate over them and to have to litigate over them 
is really very, very, um, it's a volatile situation that you put yourself in because there's no guarantee as to what judge you're going to get no. and what their thought process is going to be. There's no guarantee and you're going to spend money to do it. Um, you know, I, we have a number of cases. I haven't had to litigate a, an animal case yet or a dog case. Nobody's really fighting over their cats, let's be honest. They're all about the dogs. I mean, I, I love my cats. I don't know. That's why maybe I'll take Monroe and Rich can take Lucy and Ula. Or vice versa, I don't know what will happen, but <laughs> they really need all of these are usually about dogs. Yeah. Um, but you know, we put I don't know why that is. Why doesn't anybody I don't know? That ain't right. You know why? Because cats will choose. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I think the same thing for dogs. I remember I had a dog. I bought this this dog was so beautiful. His name was Dioji. He was um he was a chihuahua. Uh -huh. And uh, and he, I bought the dog. All right, I paid for the dog. I did everything with this dog. But the dog, I was I was young at the time, so I was still living at home. The dog tolerated me and loved my mom. Like my uh -huh. mom was it, you know. And I'm like, I gotta get another dog because this is not right. This is what you call betrayal right now. You know, <laughs> I'm up in here striving with my part time job in college, trying to pay for you. And this is yeah. what you're going to do to me? <laughs> <laughs> I ended up getting another dog that liked me better. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> and and D-O-G, D-O-G was, was his name. It was D-I-O-J-I. Yeah, that was his name, D-O-G. Um, so I ended up getting a boxer named Jurley. Oh, I love was, boxers. Oh, she was a brindle. She was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I ended up getting her, and she was partial to me. So I, I you know, got my dog. Yeah. And, boxers but, are great dogs. I love boxers. We just don't have the lifestyle for a dog. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with our hours and stuff, we, you know, cats are great. We can leave them for a few days with some food and water, and they're fine. They forgive yeah. us in a few hours and we get back. Yeah, cats don't really... They don't really need you. They don't really need people. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. I, our one cat is very clean. She's always has to be next to somebody um, on top of us, or if we're not around, she's with another cat. She always wants to be touched, and loved, and whatever. But she's unusual, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. The other ones are well. You know, I say that. By the way, I should show you the camera. But the other fat one is like sitting behind my back. So as I say <laughs> that, they, they don't. Want to be <laughs> right, she's right behind me, so I'm like screwed it all the way forward. <laughs> you don't even have a chair to sit in anymore. <laughs> and rather than move them, I just adjust myself because that's right. how it, 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 it's not your world right now. <laughs> not at all. But and for that reason, like I've negotiated a lot of agreements that have yeah. pet clauses in them. Um, sometimes it's sharing the time, sometimes it's not. But you know, that's that's more normal. I haven't had a trial with them, but yeah. Um, Jen McCaskill was saying she had an order to show cause a couple months ago, related where where the relief was granted uh, for custody of a of a dog. Really? Yeah. And they actually, the judge actually used the word custody. I don't think they use custody. I, okay. I, I, that's my word. That's my word. Okay. So, and you know, her word might have been custody as well, but I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure it was that the um, person got possession of the dog. So I wonder what the emergency was. Did she tell you? No, it was on one of these group pages that I saw. The, I saw the blur, but we'll have to reach out to her and find out that. Too. Yeah, I want to know the story. And and if anybody knows Jen, you know the story is going to be colorful. So, I <laughs> yeah, I would really love to know the story about that. Now, I've always had, you know, I, I've always had a um, a real return on investment kind of mindset with regards uh -huh. to this type of thing, because if you have other issues that you're dealing with in your divorce, you know, like custody of a child those really probably are going to overshadow any other kind of issue that you have in this respect, you know? And so I always counsel people, especially if there, um, there are budgetary concerns, I always counsel people to, to try to figure out if there's some way that they can resolve it or 
move on to issues that are just going to be a little bit more pressing in their particular case, in their particular case. If this is the only issue and you're willing to fight for it, um, then fine. But you you always have to realize that at this, this is really the ultimate 50-50 type situation. Mm-hmm. Unless you're going, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead. Unless you're going to prove that you know, your spouse is abusive. That's a whole nother story because there are people who are abusive towards animals or like in the situation that I was telling you about that your spouse is abusive to you and you really do have the wherewithal to go through a hearing on that. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I almost always tell people to, to try to resolve it just like you, you know, like you do. Yep, I am 100% with you on that with the whole return on investment um, with a lot of things divorce related. Because I think you have to separate out a lot of the emotional aspects of this and really kind of dive into what's the things that are most important to you, yes. But you have to really look at them and see, is this really worth the fight um, emotionally and financially? So, yeah, I mean, I'm 100% with you when you're thinking about pets and fighting for them um, in a litigation context. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what, and it's so, it's so true that all of this has an emotional cost to it. You know, when I start talking to people about costs, the thing that they immediately think about is the financial cost. But honestly, you know, I could think of so many situations where I will just get myself into debt, put it out a credit card, do whatever I got to do in order to, to, to get through something. But then you start really saying to yourself, okay, is this is this worth my sanity? Well, is this worth whatever my peace is that I can get? You know, and that's what you do, like you said, with any particular any aspect of a divorce case or a family law right. case. Is it really worth it? And you also have to analyze, and this is what this is why most good divorce lawyers will tell you before you really make big decisions like this, think about it, sit with yourself, because the other thing you have to ask yourself, the ultimate question is, is this person fighting me on this simply because they can? Or is this an issue that really is of great importance? Right. And you can see sometimes once you give up on an issue that um, somebody is fighting you on and you know it's not actually for the correct reason that they're fighting you, you say, fine, I don't want it. And all of a sudden, the, the, like, the whole dynamic changes. That's right. Because you're not going to be held hostage by what they're trying to push down your throat. That's right. That's right. And then it can, then it blows up into usually it becomes something else, right? Because as soon as you resolve that issue, now it's something, now now it's this, now it's that, now it's the lamp. Now it's the, I mean, we've had people fight over, fight over the marital bed. Look, y'all are not going to be sleeping on the marital bed together anymore. Who cares who gets the marital bed? Unless it's an crisis heirloom or something. You know, I had a case where the um, the wife was fighting over a um, a table saw. <laughs> the husband was like, did carpentry and was like, that was one of his hobbies, and she was like, nope, I want this table saw. And I, I was, and it was ridiculous. I said, tell you what, judge, if she can actually tell me right now what it does and how to turn it on. Then I will accept that she should be allowed to have the table fall because it was. I'm like, we're wasting so much time over nothing. It yeah. was insane. But people, that's what happens when you get close to the end. Sometimes you latch on to these things that are just some kind of a connection. And you know what? Sometimes I have to wonder. I don't know what you think, but sometimes I have to wonder: Is it because people don't really want to be divorced, or is it because they are? doing whatever they can to make the other person's life difficult. So here's another issue. You know, sometimes you really have to, you really have to wonder what people's motives are with respect to that. Yeah. I mean, I think it depends because I think it's could be both. Some yeah. people are just nasty and are, they just, if there's one way they can stick it to the other person, they're going to do it. Um, and then sometimes people are just not emotionally ready to be divorced. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, your 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 spouse has come to you and said, "I want a divorce." You are now faced with a complaint, and you're going through that process, um, and you're wrapping your mind around it as of that time. Meanwhile, your spouse has like had a year worth of time to finally come to the conclusion that the marriage is over. So mm-hmm. you're, you're, different, you're different places um, at the same time of the litigation, but you're different places. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 100% true. And so, you know, there's all of these little nuances that people need to be aware of when they start fighting over certain things. You know, whether it's whether it's Fido or Sylvester or, you know, the the couch or whatever it is, you know. You know what you know, surprise people don't fight over? What? Um, or we have, I haven't really heard any cases about it, is birds. Because birds live for so long. I don't, and I don't mean just like a cockatiel. I mean like, you know, the um, African greys and these beautiful birds that people get. They live forever. And they're very emotional. Like if you leave them, they'll start fucking their feathers out. I know there's all of these. Oh, man. The ecology of bird that you have to really, if you're not going to have the bird forever and if the bird gets attached to you, if they tell you don't get the bird because there's these birds that they just injure themselves. You know what? That's true. Okay. I, have, I have a friend who, who is getting divorced and I don't hear anybody arguing over the bird or where the bird is going to go. And I just assume that that my friend's going to keep the bird. I haven't heard anything about this bird. And I think that, you know, she had a, she had a puppy who passed away some years ago, but I would think that they probably would have been arguing over the puppy. I wonder why that is. Maybe people, maybe in those situations, people who are really bird people just realize that the, that the bird is better off wherever they're most comfortable. I wonder. Right. Because I I don't think you're going to have that kind of reaction, the, what you were describing. I don't think you're going to have anything similar to that with a with a cat or a dog. I think they'll yeah, go through a period of mourning or something, you know, like they, you know, they'll be sad or something like that. But usually they, they rally back up, especially dogs, no? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think they just adjust. They just adapt and adjust. That's interesting. So now we ha and I got to go and look and see whether there's ever been a case. Of I know. I'm going to look it up now. I want to know. Right now, but, you know, I'm just, that's just that nerd in me because, you know, I'm, that's who I am. So now I want to know if there's ever been a case of a bird. <laughs> but I will tell you, yeah, I, I really, you know, like you said, we don't have, you don't have a lifestyle for a dog. And I, my daughter has been asking me for a dog for the longest time. And I really do wish that some part of me wishes that I had the lifestyle. I guess COVID has brought on that lifestyle, but I know that's not going to be long standing, So I'm not going to, not going to bring a dog into my life like that, but I miss having, I miss having dogs. Yeah. They're great. They're, they are great. I mean, you know, I'm lucky. I, I love my cats, but um, I don't know that I'll ever go back to a dog anymore because now I'm selfish kind of with being able to come and go. I see people walking down the street, you know, it's raining or freezing cold and they have to walk the dog. And um, so yeah, I'm a little selfish that way. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a big responsibility. Yeah. Or it's a big responsibility. Yeah, people who don't want to walk their dogs, this is something that I don't understand. And I'm not judging you people. But people who don't want to walk their dogs who have made um this pooper scooper um type job or business like a real thing. I yeah, I always walk my dog. <laughs> Because I can't imagine having to have somebody come into my backyard and, and pick up no poop and stuff. I can't imagine that. Uh, if I could hire somebody to come and clean out the litter boxes, that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> this is probably why I don't have any animals right now. Probably really. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I did want to mention one thing. We're like at the 33 minute mark, but I did want to mention one thing because I do do estate planning work and I do find that people will leave, um, you know, trusts in place for their pets and provisions with who's going to take care of their pet and an allocation of a dollar amount um, for whatever their maintenance and upkeep is. And it's not usually a little bit of money. They usually leave a pretty good chunk for the medical care or food for all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that, that has, um, that has caused will contests in New York, at least. I mean, oh, I've yeah. heard some crazy cases about, you know, people leaving millions of dollars in trust for their dog. And I'm like, I will, I will take care of that dog. <laughs> because there was, wasn't there just a famous one recently, somebody passed, I, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I think there was a pretty famous one recently. Where it, it was feels millions like every of dollars. few years, right? It feels like every few years there's somebody who leaves their their dog or the, not so much cats, though. Once again, not so much yeah. cats. 
<laughs> but but I feel like every few years there's some mega rich person who leaves this ridiculous amount of money and they're like, yep, yeah, okay, so you know, I have five kids, but and thanks. Thanks for my memories, kids. But yeah, <laughs> everything goes to <laughs> everything goes to, to Fido. Sorry. <laughs> And well, he's like, thanks for the unconditional love. Right. <laughs> you know, as humans, we all have lots of conditions for it. Oh, absolutely. I often wonder, what is what does that really mean, unconditional love? People are like, oh, I have unconditional love. Mm, I'm sure I could do something <laughs> to cause you to think twice about that. <laughs> Stephanie, as usual, it has been a great show. I hope that everybody has gleaned something about what could happen in a divorce with your with your animals. And I think that the that the um, the the um, recitation that you made is not a recitation, but the statement that you made about thinking about this with your estate planning is re is really important because. I do think so. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're, especially important if you're single. Yeah, I mean, I think if you have a plan in place when you're purchasing the animal, and then also a plan in place for your state. Really important. Yeah. If you guys have any questions about stuff like this, definitely hit us up in the comment section because we yeah. check it. <laughs> if you know anybody that has a pet that would be interested in the episode, please share it with them. Have a good night. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. Undoing I Do. We'll see you next week. See you next Thursday. Bye.